Well, hello everybody. Thank you for letting me uh, come and hang out. Jesse texted me about this on Wednesday. So to give a little context, um, we aren't under contract yet. We sent an LOI a month ago. Two of the three of us, I wasn't able to go, um, flew out to look at the property a week and a half ago and we just resubmitted a second LOI this morning. So in theory, this will become a real opportunity, but right now it's not, which means that I can talk to everybody and market it publicly, right? So. Um, that being said, I feel like I should like talk to my camera for a minute and make this like a full YouTube video. Like I have a chance to enter to pitch to a bunch of millionaires. So um, I don't think I have a clicker. So we're gonna start off with just a quick video because this is the only thing I found on you. Oh, the, uh, the guy pulled the entire listing off of the MLS two days ago. So I was unable to pull like any of the actual promo videos or really nice photos, but we're gonna see if you didn't have a Mac, I could tell you how to do this. So this is the property last 4th of July. This is on YouTube. Uh, sorry. See, we have fire too. All right, so you can you can hit the next slide. Um, that was, like I said, the only video I found on YouTube of the place, so you get what you get. Um, but this is the bungalows on the bay. This is 50 bungalows with a tiki bar pool, hot tub, uh, food and beverage, and a wedding venue in St. Croix, which is a Virgin Island right next to Puerto Rico. Um, it was listed for $12.4 million and was kind of shot around on the MLS here, there, and the other. The LOI we sent today was for 6.1 million. We're expecting them to kind of come back around seven is where we're probably gonna settle. So a lot of interesting things that went into that, like the underlying debt on this was, uh, was like five point or four, four million, $5.8 million as a seller carry from the original purchase. And the guy doesn't want to wait to ride out that 5.8, so he's willing to take four if you close it out now instead of like, I think he's got seven and a half years remaining on the duration of that loan. Um, so that, talk about that. Uh, we're leaving some of the original investors in the deal. The owner's actually staying in for dividends for his payout rather than uh, a cash payout. So a bunch of just really unique things that enabled us to just kind of bargain down the price. Ultimately, the guy who bought this a few years ago owns three boutique hotels in Costa Rica as well. And kind of his whole shtick was, I'm getting burnt on both ends and I need to focus on the place I've got more assets. So uh, we're gonna end up working a, some refi, some seller carry, some investors stay in dividend, odd buyout, but um, nonetheless, you'll see some returns here. I kind of wanted to do this the way I would like to be pitched. I always joke that pitch decks are just like numbers and they're really boring, but um, I, uh, I don't know, I'm a, I'm a story guy, so I'd rather see some pictures and just have like, you'll see you see how I would want to be pitched in a minute, so. Um, like I said, we'll just kind of kick through here. So it's 50 bungalows, there's all these bright colors, they're all one ones, they're two bed. It's just hotel rooms, but each one is its own, you know, actual like building. Um, and then we'll show the inside real quick. I see my uh, slides are super professional. It tells you it's the inside in case you couldn't tell. They're all very unique though. Each one has like its own like theme and taste. The guy put a bunch of money into touching them up. They're not outdated per se, but we would make them a little bit more luxurious. And our most of our renovation budget will be uh, towards the tiki bar, the pool, the hot tub, food and beverage, 
And then essentially on this bad boy, there's room for another 28 units to be developed right now. They have power, electricity, utilities, everything set up for it. They just haven't built them. And I'm actually, I couldn't confirm this on the records, but I'm 90% certain it actually goes all the way out to here and owns the tennis courts. I just didn't want to put that in there. This is from what I can tell on Google Maps, all swampland and there's nothing there for like the rest of the beach. And then up here, there's like basically $3 million houses, but we pretty much own the whole beach. And uh, yeah, it's pretty sick. So, and then it's zoned to build 700 doors. No idea if that would ever be feasible, but in theory down the road, we could demo and build a 700 unit resort. So kind of cool to have that option. We'll kick it to the next one. Um, this is, like I said, we're looking at about 6.1 to 7 mil purchase price. Last year, the Tiki Bar brought in $748,000 in revenue. Um, it was 1.75 total revenue for the property. So if you know anything about hotels, like that's a pretty solid revenue to purchase price. That being said, lots of updates to be made. Um, the Tiki Bar right now is like Walmart cabinets with a tarp on a metal canvas across the top of it and it brought in a three quarters of a million dollars. So if we made that nice and like Instagrammable, as I say, and brought people in to show it off, I think it would blow up. He currently charges five grand for a wedding. Going rate right on the island is anywhere from 12 to 15, so room to grow there. And then, you know, the, I put it, make it influencer friendly. Um, there's a photo later where it shows like from the pool looking out over the beach. The reality is it's perfectly positioned. It's just not sexy. And it's like, man, if you just made the freaking thing you already have existing sexy and people took pictures and posted it online, that would be about all the marketing you need for a place in the tropical islands. This is how I would want to be pitched. If you give me a hundred grand, you'll get hundred percent of your initial capital back within three to three and a half years, 280 K by the end of the two year hold or 10 year hold. Targeted IRR, I put 20 plus percent because it's going to depend. Honestly, I'll show you in a minute. Our current numbers are 33%, but if I told someone that, they'd be like, this is bullshit. Um, and looking at like a target equity multiple of two and a half, well, 2.8 up to <laughs> up to like four and a quarter, but, but I don't want to, like I said, I would think that that was bullshit if someone told me that. So um, I always laugh when I see these things because they're so convoluted and I'm like, just tell me if I give you a hundred grand, when do I get it back and how much am I going to get by the time we're done? So there you go. That's our super conservative. We don't have an under contract estimate and I'll let you skip to the next one. Here's some of the boring stuff. We plan to do a million dollars in cosmetic updates. The plan then is to refi out, should have a valuation closer to 14 to 18 million. We should be able to put put everybody's capital back no later than year three. I put three and a half for a uh, buffer. And then current revenue is 1.75. We anticipate getting it up to around three and a half by the time we're done with everything. There'd be a 7% preferred return. Most of you know what that is, but just for the sake that you don't, preferred return simply means you as the investor would get 7% return that year on your money up until, and we wouldn't get a dollar until that happens other than you know acquisition fee, management fee. And uh, that, that backtracks. So if, if in the first year we're doing all the renovations and you get 3%, the second year you get 3%, then the third year you would get the last 4% of both those years plus the 7% before we'd get a dollar. Um, plan to build out, basically, like I said, focusing on all the cosmetic and the cool common area stuff. And then uh, once we hit, right now they have eight employees, we'll need about 11 to 15 to run this bad boy. And when we hit 10, St. Croix waves the hotel tax, like the 5% tax, which is pretty sick. There's some other tax incentives in there from them for economic development, but that's the easiest one to throw out. And that's not into the calculations at all on this. So there's a potential buffer there as well. Here's the really boring stuff. If you wanted to see, yes, we have an underwriting sheet. Um, this was done uh, this morning. Hey, well, over the last couple of days, this is at 6.1 purchase price. And essentially on this, I mean, you can work through all the numbers yourself. This shows a 33.67% uh, IRR and a 4.48 equity multiple, which like I said, if I told you that was the actual investment, one of two things. If you're an investor, you're thinking the GPs aren't taking nearly enough for their work. And if you're an LP, you're like, yep, that's bullshit. I'm gonna go somewhere else. That's too good to be true. Um, so, you know, we're probably gonna play with this most likely. Uh, <laughs> you probably won't see an offering come out at, hey, you're gonna get four and a half X on your money because that's unrealistic. Um, but it's gonna be that, you know, so basically the pref, the, it'll be 70, 30 split up to that three year mark. Once everybody gets their capital back, it'll be 50, 50 for the rest of the rest of the ride. 
plan is to sell in the last 10 years or in 10 years. There we go, that's me. Uh, currently got 120 doors that I have like controlling interest in, 1,048 as a GP, which I could care less about because anyone who's in real estate knows that could mean I own a, a t millionth of a percentile, but they count. It's That's another hotel and seven apartment complexes. And then I have a 40 unit hotel myself, two apartments, an RV park, and a bunch of single family stuff. Um, I run the largest military investor community in the world. Uh, as Jesse said, 67,000 people on Facebook, 50 something on Instagram, yeah, I don't know, we're over a quarter million. Uh, host of the Military Millionaire Podcast, I was in the Marine Corps, and I'm not a total asshole. And then this is Matt. Matt Amobile, he's done 20 plus partnership deals. So he bought his first, I think two houses himself. Everything else since then has been partnered where he's either bringing the capital, bringing the blood, sweat, tears or whatever. Uh, most of it I believe has been, he's the blood, sweat, tears and the other person's the capital. Uh, he makes, you know, $12,000 a month take home right now. And he's, I think he spent December through February just living in a van parked on the side of the road in Keystone with his dog. So he's a, uh, you know, total yoga hippie guy. Love him, um, but he's also just gonna move there. So, uh, has his own podcast and he'll be on site. And then this is the stud Blake. This will be his seventh boutique hotel. Uh, he's exited four of them already at or above projected returns. And then we currently bought a hotel in Tennessee, 130 keys in December. Air Force Academy played football. We won't hold it against him that he was Air Force. Um, he runs his own mastermind of boutique hotels hosting the first ever boutique hotel conference in September this year at our hotel. Uh, he, he looks like, uh, you know, GI, GI Joe doll. He's a stud and I give him shit all the time cause he's, but he operates better than he looks. So it's all good. Um, he's great. So, and then there you go. So summary, some cool pictures of the place. Ta-da. And oh, and I didn't even mention the fact that if you invest in the deal, you get to go visit for a week every year while we own it um, for free. So, that's a cool perk. Um, and then I left this super long URL for you if you want to type it out and get on the investor list or because again, I'm not a total asshole. Hey, you can just scan a QR code, but there you go. That's my mostly pitch basically story with like, hey, this might be what you get as a return on a deal that we're looking at. But this one's pretty sick because it's still technically US territory. So you don't need a passport to get out there, but it's about as cool as you can have for not being, you know, Missouri, so. If you're gonna deep dive all the numbers, I apologize right now. They're not done, so. Uh, yeah, Dave, I just wanted to ask a little bit about the team's experience um, returning investor capital in the past. Like, how is that? How is that look? I know you mentioned it a little bit, but could you? Um, could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so, well, Blake has, Blake has taken four deals full cycle and returned all his investors' capital at the expected returns or above. Um, and I've never lost any partner's capital. In fact, I, I always joke, and I've got a buddy, Mike, you can call him if you want. Uh, I had a flip that I lost 40 grand on, and the only person who made money is my private lender. So, because I would not miss a payment to anyone who gave me money. Um, not that it means anything to anyone, but I always joke that my reputation, the community and everything else. If someone was to come online and say, I screwed them in a deal, it would ruin my entire business. So I will make you whole if it means selling my house and living out of a van. Um, that being said, I do like vans, but I don't plan on making that, that, uh, that the exception, right? Uh, Matt, to my knowledge, this would be kind of his, maybe, well, I guess, I guess all of his deals have been partnership deals, but they haven't been syndication, so they're full equity partnerships, so they've, they're all still in existing cycles. And I don't think you can totally screw over your equity partner and still own the house without, so I think we're good there too. Um, but yeah, so that's the, the current team. Thanks for not totally stumping the chump. Now we, now we go. So great presentation, by the way. Love the energy, love the transparency. I think I highlight again the fact that you never lost money. You have a great track record. That's really good. The fact that you're willing that you want to is going with the man. No, seriously, no bullshit aside. It's like that's very important. Show that strength and that positivity and kind of that transparency to the investors. Important. My main question for you is, how did this deal come to fruition? It's always important to look back to the source of. All right, so they're asking 10 or 11 or 12 million. 
think you can get it for seven. That worries me as an investor because why would somebody be willing to give such a great, you know, it's a, a dollar per investment return one to one ratio. So what are we missing here? How long